taking apart the floor. Looks like teak. We tried these little extractor bits. Uh, they didn't work very well. That's massive amounts of storage. Unavailable. One more time. And action. Hey, everybody. We're Kate and Misha of For Love of Wind. And this week, we are dealing with the damage from last week. Uh, if you haven't seen last week's video, check it out up there somewhere. I think it's over there. It's over Misha. Uh, wherever. But wherever that link may be, check it out. It is very important for this video so that you understand what's going on. Uh, and we also start prepping the boat for dogs in this video and mother nature throws us a curveball pretty hard so let's get into it uh the first thing we need to discuss is the termite damage right we we get off the hard we've been treated we've been fumigated gassed we've been gassed Mm -hmm. uh, there is nothing alive on this boat, thankfully. Thankfully. That was the most important thing. That was really what we needed to get done. Everything else was secondary. Yep. Nothing alive. So, thankfully, termites, even fast-moving termites, prefer soft wood to hard wood. Right? You want to eat what you can as fast as you can to make as much nest as you can. Our floor, our sole in this boat, is marine plywood like five layer marine plywood with a, a veneer of teak and holly. I know it looks in the video like it's teak and holly. It, that's a teak and holly veneer on top of plywood, which was awesome. The termites ate out the soft layers and left hard layers. So we had a lot of these floor panels that had, uh, it looked like someone had just taken a scoop and scooped out the middle layers. It was very, very interesting. Um, None of the teak in the galley, none of the teak in, uh, around the bulkheads and everything like that got touched. Just a, that's that plywood. We got a lot of comments about, why didn't that show up in, any, in the survey? Or you should have gotten a survey. We did get a survey, a very full survey. And I was there for the whole survey. The surveyors did find evidence of termite damage in one of the back lazarettes. The report stated that they felt it was confined to the lazarette outside of the boat and that there was no evidence of termite damage inside the boat. They did also say that it appeared to be from a previous infestation with, or the lazarettes showed no evidence of an active o ongoing infestation. Damage, yes. um, so one of the things you're going to see coming up, this boat had bilges that you could access, and this boat had bilges that were screwed down and you couldn't access. And uh, as you can see, in fact, cut to this snippet here. The center area is the area you can access, and notice there's no mud trails in that. There was no evidence. I, I, I was there for the survey. We pulled up every board we could, but we didn't unscrew anything. And there was no evidence of termites prior to that. We found a treasure trove of, of supplies and equipment uh, in these screwed down panels, right? Uh, who knows how long they've been there. Probably the original owner uh, put them there. It's possible. Uh, Extra line, some yeah. anchors. Um, um, a, whole, a whole mount, a stainless steel mount for our radar post in the back that I ended up using for our Starlink. Uh, yeah, I mean... Anyway, lots of good stuff. Lots of good, lots stuff. Of good stuff. that probably and, hadn't and seen very the light of day in years. And serviceable stuff. The lines, uh, the termites hadn't made their nest on the lines or in the lines, but they had left a whole bunch of mud on them. So I did actually take the the term, the, the, the lines that we found, 
big ones, long lines, uh, complete halyards and, and sheets out uh, and and wash them heavily and then lay them out on the dock. Mm -hmm. We we went and brought several sheets of marine plywood. Just did a simple lay. It was like Tetris, right? We had to we took a sheet of marine plywood and tried to figure out how many pieces. We tried several different pieces. How many pieces can we fit of the sole uh, of the original flooring on a single sheet of plywood to maximize use utilage. 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 U u utilization. I think you just made up a word. Maximize. Yes. Utilage. Copyright. <laughs> utilization. That's gonna make us rich in twenty years. There you go. Maximize utilization uh, of each plywood piece. So uh, we cut those out, and then we came back and we test fit them onto the floor. Now, if you'll see on the left there. Uh, one of the pieces that we cut was exact mirror of what we pulled out and that was a screwed down piece and I did not want to do that on either side when we we pulled these pieces out of the floor some of them like the piece over our tank uh, we don't need access to that that's fine screw down but the pieces in the salon that covered our bilges those are deep large wells and we wanted access to that yeah that's usable space yeah. and we need all the storage we can get all the storage we can get it's actually a big surprise so you can see uh, our batteries they're getting replaced there's another one back there these center panels all pulled up i mean they instant easy access all of these panels and all of these panels and that panel were screwed down which means that's that's deep storage like like that's like almost knee deep storage that's massive amounts of storage unavailable so i'm going to cut new floorboard that will have hatches that access because yeah that's i mean that's massive amounts of tool storage and food storage and spare parts storage uh why why waste it so back at it so we actually took those pieces that we had cut perfectly to fit cut them along the grid lines and put them in individually so that now we have access to those bilges and we're st currently storing food and games and uh, you know all sorts of yeah. stuff. They're they're very they're, they're decent, so um, that has worked out really really well for us uh, making that modification. Once we had all the marine plywood down, we still had a little bit of plywood left over, and thought this would be a great time to do the stairs. So we have six steps on our staircase. And they were all this, this nice, pretty curved wood and all very uniform. It looked beautiful when we first got the boat. So these are our current steps, right? They have this nice roll, so if the boat's heeled over, you can step flat, because if, if it's the boat's leaning on both sides. Uh, we're going to remove the top four and replace them with a flat piece of wood. And then we're gonna take this carpet and we're gonna glue it down like this. One of the things that the dogs don't like when they're going up is that they're concerned their feet will slide, so we're putting carpet, and go through, especially uh, our Whippet Oliver and our, our uh, Italian Greyhound, they really do not like the, the through parts. So we needed to replace the steps with something that was a little bit more level, a, a little bit wider, and maybe a little bit longer, so they had more usable more, stuff yeah surface and then we needed to cover it in carpeting we've already cut these four plates to go on the four steps uh, they are measured to be the right width in theory haha <laughs> and they're about a half inch deeper this way um, but we're gonna place these on drill and screw these back in place and then we can glue all of that down. Now, what we're gonna do is glue this into place on each one of these. Woo. That 
as such and then we're going to cut these trims down and put the trim on the edge of each one. It's contact bond glue. We're actually using the, uh, the 3M High Strength 90. You spray it on the carpet, you spray it on the step, you give it about two minutes to dry till it's tacky, and then you touch them together. That's why it's called contact bond. When you touch them, that's it. Pull down. Maybe we need masks. It looks very attractive and turned out very, very well. Did you, I mean, mm -hmm. I would say it's not uh, professional by any means. There's kind of the, the carpet kind of bags out in between the, the But there's steps, a curve, the stairs curve. The I wanna, stairs, I it's a semi-spiral, I think is what they call yeah. it on a hunter's semi-spiral staircase. So it was, it was never curve. going to be straight anyway no. without cutting a lot of carpet. Right, and once the dogs are gone, we're planning on putting the original steps back we in. We saved so. the original steps. Mm -hmm. Yes. We got uh, those stairs done. So now we have nice carpeted stairs and uh, a lot of bare plywood. For our benefit, so it's soft on feet, and for the dog's benefit, so they don't slide around while we're healed over, and uh, to make it not look like plywood, uh, we're putting down rubber teak matting. So we have this stuff. And as you can see, looks like teak. Um, and it's self-adhesive, but it's really good glue. I'm cleaning all of the surfaces with denatured alcohol. So we vacuum it, then we denature it, and then, uh, then self-adhesive it down. We've already done the forward cabin. And I'm, I'm, I'm working on the salon right now, so uh, I feel like the forward cabin actually turned out pretty decent. Now we haven't cut the slits for the panels into it yet. We're going to lay it all down and then just take a razor and cut where the panels are so it's self-adhered to the panel and is a uh, perfect fit. Uh, we, ordered, we ordered several rolls of this EVA foam and then what we would do is we'd vacuum really well. We would clean with denatured alcohol and then use the adhesive backing that came with it. This stuff sticks so well that there was one spot where I had to remove a piece after it had cured for like a day. Just the adhesive backing after denatured alcohol, it ripped up the holly and teak veneer on the original sole. So I've got it in position. I'm gonna score the paper just a little with my razor here. Just so that when I peel the paper off, it peels off only one side. It should not have moved. It's a valid question though. Looks lined up here. Looks lined up there. I mean, it sticks well. I've been very, very impressed. Yeah. Fairly waterproof. Uh, water pools on it, something like that? It does tend to get a little bit dirty, so, and it's easy to clean, um, but you have to scrub it a little bit. It's not, not like a nice, smooth floor. It has you a texture a like teak. Uh, like 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 leaky teak. It's like the deck of a teak, right? It has a little bit of texture, which works out really well. It is grippy. You do not when you're walking around the boat. We've been in heavy seas in this boat. It's not slippery. Yeah, it's slip sliding all over the place. No. Yeah. Uh, we've had water on the floor. You know, we have dogs. They drink. They bleh, spill. Not slippery at all. So uh, dropped tools on it. They don't make this loud clangy clang noise. It's like thump. You know, falling on it on my knees. I didn't break a hip. We thought about um, staining it to resemble teak and holly because we've seen that done before and it looked really nice and turned out really well. Yeah, you you, uh, you stained it a nice like honey color which to, to match the holly. And then you literally put like car pinstriping tape down 
it in stripes and then you stain the crap out of it with uh, some kind of you know cherry wood or, or mahogany or, or teak uh, stain so that now it matches the the teak side and then when you pull the tape up you have that perfect striping that pin striping right the teak and holly and and we talked about that we even bought the stains to test that i believe we did yeah but then we ultimately decided that the floors are kind of slick for the dogs anyway and since our littlest one already has problems on regular floors that with the addition of the boat rolling from time to time and um, kind of, you know. That, in that fact, truthfully, if, it, if it had not been for the termites, we probably would have the original sole on the boat, uh, and and rugs, and then throw rugs, rugs everywhere. Yeah, there would be throw rugs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that, that was the only other alternative, right? Yeah. That was one thing when we saw Flo for the first time, one thing that I really liked about her was her teak and holly floors. I, that was one of my favorite parts. That was something that I wanted in a boat. Uh, I'm very sorry I got destroyed. It happened. It is what it is. You live and learn. But we, we've got something that's more dog friendly now. And I think once the dogs are gone, we may look back at... Um, Replacing, replacing with the teak and holly or at least staining to look like teak and holly and not keeping the foam. Yeah. yeah. Although, uh, man, I do love this. It's grippy. It's also quiet, right? We have quiet. a fiberglass uh, cabin. What's the top of it? The deck. Can, no, the, the deck's on the outside, but what's the inside of the top? It, maybe, I don't know, maybe it's deck. Okay, so deck. Anyway, uh, it, this foam just absorbs sound from the engine, from the waves, it from the from, it, it's yeah, it's it very, does. very nice in here. So uh, the other was very easy to install. Um, it cuts with just a, a razor blade or box scissors. cutter or I mean, scissors. Yeah. So we like it and we would recommend it and we'll put a link to it in the below. description in the description. And then Mother Nature steps in. Hurricane Ian clears Cuba and is forecast to go up the west coast of Florida. Insert forecast here. So as you can see, that's the west coast of Florida. And that cone of uncertainty, and, and here is Cape Canaveral, that cone of uncertainty just touches us. This is like three days out, right? Barely, barely. Uh, we're technically, technically in the cone of uncertainty, but barely. And it's a wide cone. Not even close to the track that all the forecasts were agreed on this thing was going to do. So she has... We were watching all the models, too. The GFS oh, yeah. model, the GFS, European the Euro, model, I mean, the, the, the works. ECCM or whatever. Yeah, the, the there was there was like four or five models we were watching. Right. And, and they were all pretty in alignment that it was going right up the West Coast. The Port Canaveral people were also watching the same models. And they did not issue a mandatory evacuation. They said shelter in place. Ha ha! Joke's on you! It turned. And it turned hard. And it turned straight for Cape Canaveral. And when I say... It turned straight for Cape Canaveral. The eye of the storm went over our marina. Very damaging. Destroyed much of Florida. One of their more damaging hurricanes. But by the time it gets to the east coast over Cape Canaveral, it's a it's a tropical storm. The eye is still there, but it's a little disorganized. We're living in the RV about 30 minutes away. That's as close as we could get reasonably. During the storm, we get a call from one of our neighbors who lives on his boat, like our next one who lives on his boat. He said, hey man, you have some serious chafe going on. And I had doubled up lines, right? I knew this was gonna be bad. So I, every line I had, I put a second line on. And uh, we, get the, we get the call, hey, it is, it is chafing bad. You need to come out here. This is looking ugly. So we immediately hop in the suburban. In the in the tropical storm, right? They tell you to stay off the roads. We didn't have a choice. We I, we gotta go save our livelihood, literally. Uh, flying down the highway at like 
30 miles an hour because the winds were making it really hard to just stay on the road in a 6,000 pounds of three quarter tons of bourbon. Uh, we get there. We did end up breaking one line. Our second line caught it, thankfully. Um, so many boats breaking lines and drifting into pillars. Uh, but we, yeah, we... Uh, it did work out really great because we had a great community there. Everybody pitched in to help, even people that they didn't know. And yeah. and we had everybody boats worked we together know. and I think saved a lot of boats that day. Huh. Anyway, that's uh, that that brings us up to the so resolution of Hurricane Ian. So uh, next week, instead of doing repairs, we start doing upgrades. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I am so happy about that. We finally get to talk about stuff that we want to do and yes. not repairs that we have to do. This is this is where it starts getting good. So, uh, yeah, if you're ready for it, next week we take on Tower in a Box. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you've made it this far, we got a special level of love for you. Especially thank you to, to everybody who's watched all our other videos. At the end of this video, there's a link to the previous and the first video. Give them a good watch. They'll catch you up. Um, Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. It, it doesn't cost you anything and it really, really does help us out a lot. We're, we're, we're growing the channel as fast as we can. Uh, we're reading all your comments. 
Uh, another one of the big comments we got about last week's video was sound, so... We're working. Oh, yeah. So this time I'm mic'd up, so hopefully my voice, which is a little bit smaller, will kind of even out with Cade's voice. Yeah. We, uh, <laughs> we actually do have microphone for this whole thing, but it's so funny. It's like, my wave signal, he's just wave signal. I know, I can't. <laughs> Even when I try to talk louder, it's I always end up kind of in my She's way. just soft-spoken. <laughs> but we heard you, we're trying. We really appreciate the comments. Please keep all the criticism coming, right? We're trying to be better, and we can't get that way if you don't let us know. So. Thank you guys so much. We appreciate all of you. We wouldn't have a channel without you. And uh, we'll see you next time.